Hi, welcome to the layer 3 curriculum. My name is Arul Richardson and I'm from the Technical Knowledge Management Group and I will be your lead instructor for this onboarding program. So in this video, we are going to talk about NPT 1022. Yes, you're correct. From the name, it reveals the origin of this NPT. The NPT is originated from the NPT 1020, but with IPMPLS capabilities. So let's begin. NPT 1022 has a 64 gig packet switching capacity. It's a pure packet NPT. Now NPT 1022 is dual stack, which means it supports both versions of IP, IPv4 as well as IPv6. At the same time, it also supports both version of MPLS implementation. It supports the MPLS TP as well as MPLS IP, just like all of the other BCM families. NPT 1022 has a new support of ZTI, which is zero touch installation. It's basically configuring your NPT with the use of a single USB. We will talk about this in this video in some slides. The NPT 1022 is a one unit shelf, which is a front access connector type, which means that all of its ports, which is in out port are at the front. There is no ports behind or at the side of this NPT 1022. The NPT 1022 has a single traffic slot. Now this single traffic slot has various traffic cards that can be supported. We will talk about these traffic slot cards in a moment. The NPT 1022 also supports an expansion unit. The expansion unit is EXT2U and you have some of the cards which can be supported in the extension unit. Now the NPT 1022 supports new cards with the new version of V7.5 which is EM10E. So you will have NPT 1022 as well as other NPTs in this new version supporting the EM10E in the extension unit. This is the layout of NPT 1022. You can see right at the beginning you have the INF slot. This is for power. You have another INF slot again for redundancy. Now at this INF slot you can see that these are bigger than the regular ones. Over here you can see that there is a blank panel. Now, please note that this blank panel is not for traffic slot. It's basically for AC adapters. The NPT 1022 also supports AC adapters and also these AC adapters come in a redundant manner. And these AC adapters are bigger than the DC ones. So this space over here you can see is for the AC adapter. You can have two at the same time. The NPT 1022 has four fast Ethernet 1 gig ports as you can see highlighted in yellow and it has 12 optical ports of 1 gig each and over here it has four 10 gig ports again optical ports. This is a traffic slot where you can have multiple traffic slot cards which we will talk about it in a moment. This is a port where you can insert your USB for ZTI zero touch installation. You have T3, T4 ports on NPT 1022, T3 for timing input, T4 for timing output. This is useful for TOD and 1PPS. Over here you have two ports, one port RS232 for your console login and the other port for LCT CLI login. So LCT CLI login is to get the CLI access using an IP address. So the LCT CLI port is an IP port. This cannot be advertised into routing protocol. And the RS232 is a serial port, so there is no IP on this port. And you can log in console using the RS232 port. And at the end, you have SCSI type alarm cable connector. You can use this to send the alarms to the XRAP or any other external alarm agent. This is the block diagram of NPT 1022. It can have a maximum 31 gig ports or 6 10 gigs ports. Now let's see what is ZTI. Okay, I think I'm covering some stuffs behind. So I'll just get a bit uh, this way. I think that's fine. So what is ZTI? ZTI is zero touch installation. So basically ZTI is required to get the basic parameters of the NPT and bring it available in the EMS station. One thing to note that the NPT 1022 does not have a pluggable NVM, which means that you cannot configure the NVM remotely and send it to the field engineer to just insert it into the shelf. Someone technical person must be available on site in order to configure the NPT 1022. 
But using ZTI, you can simply configure the USB and this USB can be inserted into the NPT and by powering on the NPT, the NPT will automatically take the configurations from the ZTI USB port and will auto configure itself with all of the basic configuration to be available in the EMS station. The USB is loaded with software applications. It's loaded with all of the initial configuration and it is done by your NVM loader. Now, more than one any configuration can be added in the USB. The USB is then inserted into the NPT. The NPT is then powered on. Now, when the NPT is powered on, the NPT will copy the configurations from this USB stick that is attached on the USB port to this NPT 1022. And all of the basic configuration is auto configured on this NPT 1022. Now, keep in mind, if you want ZTI to function, ZTI is a licensed feature. So you need a license for ZTI. So it will automatically pick up a license from the EMS for availing the ZTI feature. Now talking about some of the traffic slot cards which are supported in the T slot, which is available in NPT 1022. You have the first card over here, which is called DHGE4EB. As the name sounds, it's a pure packet data card with one gig port rate. It has four ports and all of those ports are electrical based. In addition to it, it has power over Ethernet support as well. Talking about the next card, the next card is DHGE8. This is a card which is also used in NPT family like NPT1200. First of all, DHGE is a data card with gig interfaces. Since there is no E, it means this is optical one gig ports. Eight means it can support eight ports. The next card is DHGE10, DH data card, GE 1 gig, no E, so it's going to be optical ports. And now over here you have 10 optical ports. Do you have five physical ports, but by using CSFP, you can double the port to 10. The next and important module that is supported on the NPT 1022 is DHXE for SEC. Now this is a special card which is used for MacSec. Now, what is MacSec? MacSec is basically a layer 2 encryption technique. So this card can have MacSec layer 2 encryption on your network. All of the four ports support MacSec, but without enabling MacSec, this card can be used as a DHXE4 card. Talking about the next card, the next card is DHXE2. As the name sounds, data hybrid XE, which is 10 gig and it has two ports. So this card supports two 10 gig ports and can be inserted in the traffic slot of NPT 1022. Some of the CES modules that are supported on NPT 1022. The first one is multi-service E1's card, which has 32 E1-T1 interfaces, as you can see over here. So it's so this is a CES card with 32 E1s and T1s. Another card is MS1 underscore 4. MS is a multi-service card, again a CES card. You can see over here it has four STM1s and it can have 252 E1s. Moving ahead, there is a multi-service combo card, which means it has a combination of STM as well as E1 ports. So the MSE2 underscore 8 has two STM ports and eight E1 ports. So it's called multi-service combo card. So talking about the summary, we spoke about NPT main features, how NPT 1022 is introduced in version 7.5 which is a IP MPLS device in the NPT 1020 family. The product layout, we saw the INF section, the traffic slot section, the traffic ports, the numbering of the ports. We talked about the ZTI. We also spoke about the internal block diagram of the NPT 1022. And at the end, we saw all of the IO modules which are supported in NPT 1022. To be more specific, the pure packet cards and the CES cards that are supported in the traffic slot available in NPT 1020. I hope you liked this session and I hope that this session was informative. I'll see you in the next part of the video where I will be talking about more and more IP concepts which are related to ECI NPT. Until then, thank you and thanks for watching.